Hi, welcome along to um, a brand new podcast. It's called All Guns Blazing. You like that, right? Mm. You like that? Yeah, Guns? Right. Yeah. Gunners? See what they'll, you did they'll get it, they'll get it. You see what I've done there, yeah, right? All Guns Blazing. Um, this is going to be a regular po- podcast featuring myself, Robbie, uh, featuring the controversial figure that is Mr. DT. You're controversial, aren't you? Uh, only to a few. <laughs> you are controversial, you know that? Some might say. You are controversial. I, I would like to say... You want a lot of people like, no, rub them up the wrong way. Do you know what? I would rather say I'm honest. Some people just don't yeah. like the honesty. Do you think you're a bit too honest sometimes? And sometimes you should just hold it down a bit. No, not really. I think that maybe some people need to just pull their tampons out. <laughs> you see what I mean? You see what I mean about this guy, right? So, listen, what, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be doing this regularly. and We'll be talking about various subjects. It could be Arsenal. It could be just even football subjects. But the one that I'm going to speak about today is an Arsenal problem. I think also a football problem. We'll get into that later on. And it's the one about atmosphere at mm. the stadiums. Now, the Emirates Stadium, we know, is a beautiful stadium. I've been to every single stadium in the Premier League. Um, I've been to stadiums all around Europe. But in the Premier League, for me, 100% it is the best stadium in the Premier League, bar none. However, it can also be one of the quietest stadiums mm. in the Premier League. You've even got our away fans sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, when we go to away grounds, singing to other fans when they're quiet, is this the Emirates? Which is a song I hate, by the way, right? right? Now, what can we do to get this right? And what are these problems? First of all, let's address the problems, DT. Um, Because I know that you've been very vocal on this. Yeah. Talking about the atmosphere, talking about the fact that nothing's been done about it. What, What for you are the main problems at the Emirates? Everyone's um, completely separated. Mm. Um, the, the mixture of fans, you've got people that are just turning up for the first time that are mixed with some old school, that are mixed with new fans, that are mixed with people that want to be quiet and just watch the game, people that want to create an atmosphere. And then you've got stewards that, you know, you don't get me wrong, not all stewards are bad. You've got some that will let you stand up, that will let you sing, that will let you try and create something. Mm. Then you've got stewards that treat the place like North Korea. Let's be honest, Mm. you know, threatening to have your season ticket taken off you. Mm. So automatically you're thinking, I've got to be quiet. I don't want to jeopardise my season ticket. Pay a lot of money for that. And at the drop of the hat, they can Mm. take it off you just because you want to create something. It's, It's wrong. I think they made... The biggest mistake was when they moved from Highbury in the first place um, because it took a few years before they actually named mm. the sides of the Emirates, the clock end, the North Bank, the East and the West. Um, and what happened was, was that clock end fans from Highbury were just going in different areas, North Bank, East, West, they were all scattered all over the place. And when Arsenal finally did name the sections, mm. you had people like myself who are clock end stuck in now the north bank and vice versa and Mm. it was a mess i think it was done wrong from the beginning yeah there was a lot of mistakes made at the beginning and to be fair you know it was sort of like the first major club Mm. in the premier league to make a big move like that to a brand new stadium so maybe they weren't aware of some of the problems um i mean there's so many things that mean yeah. that the, how long the, did it, the atmosphere at stadiums just is not the same as it nah, used to be. The thing is, how long did it take for them to put the clock inside the stadium? You know, that was mm. one thing as well. Everyone knows about the clock at Arsenal. Mm. It's part of our history. It's massive. So one of the first things that they should have been doing when moving into the stadium is saying, right, that clock takes place inside the stadium. Mm. We keep a part of our history from Highbury coming over. But they didn't. It's like they didn't listen. Like they wanted a clean slate, fresh I mean, start. One of the big problems, as we know, is um, because of what happened at Hillsborough. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's still a thing that, even though we're starting to get some closure on it, it's still not fully resolved. Mm. So politicians, as you know, they don't want to introduce things like safe standing. Um, 
but well, it's working elsewhere. Yeah, but it's still a touchy subject because the whole thing hasn't been resolved. So you have all-seater stadiums and, you know, basically fans are being told to sit down. I mean, you get, and we see it every time we go to an away game, all the away fans stood up. Yeah. So the other night at Everton, all the away fans stood up. All the home fans have got to sit down. Yeah. You know, they and like you said, they're they're told to sit down or they get their season ticket yeah. taken away. Even an example of that is at the Emirates when PSG come to us the other mm. week. Look at their atmosphere and look at their fans. And there was one guy at the very front of all the fans. And I, I remember it as clear as day, even though I was at the other end, and I mm. remember him and he was wearing a white t shirt and he was facing the PSG fans all gay and he was just conducting everything mm. one guy on his own mm. created that kind of atmosphere with just a couple of thousand people mm. and that's why you sit there and think what could we actually do now we're going to get to some solutions right but i'm still dealing with the problems right so mm. modern stadium the balance is all wrong as you said you know what yeah. I mean? because you've got people that you know fans all in different areas the age group mm. at the emirates you know what i mean it's it's quite a, a known thing that most of the fans at the Emirates, so you could say, are over 30 years old, 30 years old mm. um, because they're the only ones who can afford it. So the prices of how much, you know, how much it costs to get into the stadium, that impacts on it. Mm. Younger fans are going to jump around and make more noise than, say, a fan that's 50 plus. Mm. So, you know, you've got all those problems. Um, I mean, there's just... Fans leaving early, which yeah. is another one that I've heard huge, you huge, talk about. Fans really coming in late. Up. So fans coming in late mm -hmm. and fans leaving early. The, the thing with the fans um, arriving early um, and not arriving early, should we say, is the club need to address that. The club need to make things more appealing with inside the stadium to attract people to come in before kickoff. One of the biggest problems we have. Now, we haven't got a problem with the height and security. Well, that is a problem. You know, that is it, a problem. It is a problem, but I haven't got a problem with them. We know the reasons the, why they're yeah, doing it. You know, but it's you, a problem. You do accept it? that, but yeah. that is a problem. Now, the problem we have is not so much the security checks, but the amount of people that turn up with ten minutes to go, which then make the queues ridiculous and nobody getting in on time. Hmm. Why can't you make things more appealing inside the stadium so that people do come earlier? People don't arrive earlier. Because there's nothing to attract them inside the stadium. Like what? What would you? What would you say? Well, you remember, the, you, gonna... you remember the Highbury days, right? Um, and it, I even, you know, even though I'm clock end, I've still been in the North Bank during the Highbury days, and I remember when there was bands in there. You know, the beer was not excessive. Bands where on in the foyer inside the inside the concourse in the concourse. You know, yeah. something to a bit of entertainment, something to get people having a little, you know, mm. song and dance sort of thing, and um, the beer was not great but the prices were all right, so you didn't care. Mm. You know, you had a couple of choices of, of beer and that was it, but mm. no one cared. The prices were decent. They were what you would get down the pub and you would... Don't get anyone mates. in early, though, because, you know, I think at Arsenal they've done something similar to that before. I where they've tried anything. to... I'm sure they have, where they've tried to encourage people to come in earlier because of cheaper drinks. And nobody... Everyone goes to their local. They've got their local pubs that they've been going to for years and they go to that. But it used to work you know? at Highbury. And I've even seen Red Action... And I'm going to talk about Red Action because I've heard you criticise Red Action. You hear me saying a lot I've, of I've, seen, I've seen Red Action, right, put a call out there and say to fans, we've got this game going on tonight. We want everyone to hold up these cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. We get in early. What every fan to... And people still didn't heed that call and come in early. You know, no, I'm so... Do you know what? Then once I know what you're on about. You're on about like the Bayern Munich games yeah. and the big European games. Yeah. And they worked really well. It's fantastic. When, when they do that mm. and... Fans come in early and you hold up these cards and that, straight away, there's a buzz around the place. Yeah, of course. There's a buzz going on around the place. But I don't know. I think, and, and, and this is something that I've heard the guys from Red Action say, fans need to take a lot more responsibility for the atmosphere. We like to moan about it a lot, mm -hmm. but some of the same fans that you see moaning are the, some of the same fans that you never see singing or if somebody gets up in front of them and starts singing, they tell them to sit down. Yeah. So, you know, and I know you've criticised Red Action. I mean, why have you criticised Red Action? Because, because I look on Red Action and at least they're trying to do something. No, I... And I for, 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 just for, for people who don't know who Red Action are, they're like um, a group of guys who try to, 
you know, they, they've just tried to get the atmosphere going. They, they, they're the guys behind the banners that you'll see being unfurled sometimes. Not, not my the, banner. <laughs> not his banner. Nothing to do with his banner. Not my banner. The banners <laughs> that you see being unfurled at the start of games although, and although things they like were, that. They were responsible for the banner that was... Uh, Calling uh, Uzman off out. Well, so you say. I'm no, we, no, we, it had their name on it. Yeah, we, name. We, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not scared to. Well, say I don't know of any evidence of that, right? I, I don't know about that. I can but, go to right? Google now and show you. <laughs> right. But I'm saying that, right, that Red Action, at least they're trying to do something. No, I don't, yeah? I don't agree with that at all. I think, they've lo- I think they've lost all interest in it. I think they've lost all heart. You don't have to go on their social media. It's a social media platform which is there to try and bring the fans together. Right. But yet all they seem to be doing is slating people that are coming to them with opinions. What, what do you and mean? Someone, at our, um, someone messaged them a few weeks ago, and this was one of the things that I said to you. They tweeted out that, um, that in his block, mm. the fans are being told to sit down. Yeah. You know, because Red Action put a tweet out about the atmosphere and can we get it going, etc., etc. And someone came to them and said, in our block, we get told to sit down. It was a very simple reply to a question that was put by Red Action. And Red Action, being who they are, affiliated with the club, supposed to be the mouthpiece of the club between the fans, mm. should have come to this guy and said, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this, uh, private message, let's have a discussion about it, what block you're in, um, you know, what actually happened, and then we will go to the club and mm. say, this is happening. What do you propose? What are you going to do about it? And if the club do nothing... Red yeah. Action can then turn around to the fans and say, we've put this forward to the club, the club have done nothing about it. The fans can then turn on the club and say, why ain't you doing something about it? You talk about the atmosphere, you want to get it right, but yet you're not doing nothing about it. Red Action immediately started criticising this fan. Saying what? Um, about how he needs to take some responsibility. How, and the guy Fans had, do need to no, take responsibility. Fans do though. need to take some responsibility, but all this guy had said to them was... I try singing, I try doing something, mm. and I get told, sit down or you're having your season ticket taken off you. Mm. So what more is he meant uh, to do? You know, I feel a bit sorry. Uh, listen, I if, 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 that, if that's said, right, I, I understand what you're saying. That, that's you know, not, that's not good. I genuinely believe I feel Red sorry. Action have lost all interest. I genuinely I've, think. You look at their tweets. Do you blame them? No, I don't blame them in that sense. Do you blame sense. them? I, I mean, don't blame them in that they're sense. The only, you, you know what? I respect those guys because at least they're trying to do something. Mm. At least they're trying to do something, right? But it's almost I hear a lot of fans like they're blaming Red Action. It's got nothing to do with it. They're trying. No, the, the problem what is, is they're not being transparent. This is the thing. If transparent I, if, about what? If I was... If I they're was, not, they're let, not in those secret let, cahoots let, for the let, club. Listen, if I was running that, for instance, yeah, for argument's sake, fans come to me and said, we want this to be part of the match day experience. We want this to be part of the pre-match and everything else. I would then go to the club with that because they've got the capabilities of going to the club, to the highest people in, within the club and saying, we want X, Y and Z. Now, if I went to the club... Don't you think they've tried and, that throughout no, the years? But this is the thing. We don't know what's actually going on. I right? remember I spoke to Ray from... Right, and I said to Ray, I go... Um, it Ray from Red Action. I said, Ray, why don't we have like somebody doing a drum Right, and don't get me wrong. I'm not a lover of drums, mm. but I have seen it when I've been at Swansea, uh, Crystal Palace. Palace. That they use a drum, and it does help to get the place going. It yeah. does help, right? Whether you like it or not. And he said to me, he goes, "There was a female fan who came and was doing like a drumming mm. at one time at the Emirates, right?" And he goes, "She, and she got, got so abused. much abuse that she doesn't even come to Arsenal you know no more." Give, I give. mean, so you know, what I mean, a lot of things that we may not think they've tried a lot of things. And everybody's just slated them. And, and then those same, this is why maybe they get frustrated. Then those same fans will be asking them, what are you doing? You know what? Sometimes you've just got to persevere with things. Maybe you give the drum to someone that doesn't mind taking it. Give the drum to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Do you think I'm going to worry about abuse? Right? I can vlog in one hand and drum in the other. Hey, so hold on. Is like, that, wait a minute. Is that another problem? No. Is that another problem? Fans come in here, vlogging while whoa, the game... Whoa, whoa. Like, now, hold on. No, no, hold that's fine. On. I know what you're going to say. I've seen, right? I can't wait for this I've one. I've seen... Remember the other night when we was at um, 
Where was we? We was away. Switzerland. We was in Switzerland. Yeah. And uh, you was vlogging, and there was a fan behind. We're not going to mention his name, but he took exception to that. Yeah. And said fans shouldn't be coming to games vlogging and stuff like that. How can you? How can you vlog? And sing and have an atmosphere at the same time. Yeah, well, he can go and fuck himself. <laughs> and, but, but, um, as he, what, what, what do you say to that? I mean, pe- people on... You only, have, you only have to watch the vlogs, yeah? Um, I'm not trying to plug my vlogs, but <laughs> watch the vlogs, yeah? They are good vlogs, actually. And, um, they are good vlogs. And you look at it, Robbie, and apart from when I'm talking before the game and at half-time mm. and whatnot, I barely look at the camera. Mm. It's, you know, I'm concentrating on the game. Mm. And I'm singing, I'm trying to do everything I can to create an atmosphere. Mm. And I vlog home games, away games. No one has a problem with the away atmosphere, all right? Nobody turns around when we're away from home and goes, oh, DT vlogging, he's a problem for... (laughs) They don't mention that. As soon as there's a problem at home, I get brought into it. Now, yes, I have a problem with people FaceTiming because Mm. this guy is paying no attention to the game. This guy I've seen people doing... at the game on iPads. Exactly. Like... I've seen, there was one the other week where they're doing, um, they're doing the homework and stuff. <laughs> you know, these are the fans that are the problem because they're not genuinely doing anything to create an atmosphere. They're concentrating on FaceTime with their missus. They're concentrating on their homework. I might be vlogging, but I'm concentrating on the game. It's one of the problems at the Emirates because we've got a lot of, uh, you'd say, newish fans. So mm-hmm. um, a lot of fans will come from abroad and that they get a lot of blame for the atmosphere. Now, I personally think it's wrong. You know what? I the, the Most to... of the fans that I meet from abroad are really passionate about Arsenal yeah. and would love to get involved with all the songs. Yeah. But nobody's helping them. I, I think that, you know what? I was one of the uh, people that was critical of foreign fans a few years ago and thinking that they just turn up and don't do anything. And then I kind of got to know a few, got to understand a little bit more and open my mind to a few things. And they're not the problem, mm. you know, and fans But they like, do come. Some, uh, some you will have a foreign oh, fan will yeah, come. Yeah, there, there are some. You know, just taking wanna, a lot of selfies and yeah, stuff like that. But, you know, but the majority of them now that I suppose I, I, I would see, if I went abroad to a that's the thing, game, I, wouldn't I? You know, so, and, uh, there's a lot of fans that I've met um, and it's down to older people like myself that have been going for so long to teach them some of the songs that we do mm. you know let a lot of them are coming and they don't understand they don't you know you've got to try and teach them the culture mm. you know if it, more than anything and try and make them understand what it's like to be an arsenal fan teach them the songs not just the same boring meza Ozil song you know alexi sanchez can score a goal and we start singing meza Ozil. what's that about we haven't got enough songs. We need more no, songs we as well. No, we do need more. And even we when we get them, West Ham will probably say we nicked it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's... And this is the thing. We should be taking that on board. Yeah. But there, a lot of the problem that I see, and I see it online, is a lot of the older generation. I'm part of the older generation. Mm. I've been going since 1986. Mm. The difference is, is I've moved with modern times. So I will vlog a game now. Mm. And I will go on social media and I'll do all the things that all the younger generation will do mm. because I've woke up to reality and this I, is the I, way I, you have to You know move. what, I've got to agree with you on that. I, I find that a lot of uh, older fans, not all, but a lot of them don't embrace. We do need to embrace. Mm. I mean, if, if, if it weren't for modern technology, you wouldn't have this. Yeah. What makes me laugh is that... You wouldn't have Arsenal like, Fan TV. The, the Mind is, you, there's a few of them might say, yeah, yeah good. There, there you go. <laughs> you know what I mean? but, but you wouldn't have things like this. I think you can still embrace all these things and mm-hmm. have a great atmosphere. And, you know, and the other thing is, is this an Arsenal problem or is this a football problem? Because, you know what, I went to um, a game um, about a month or so ago. It's Man City versus Middlesbrough. I got invited up there, right? <clears> and... <throat> Mm. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. But you know what? The interesting thing about that is, it was a full house, right? You know, people really? say, yeah, people <laughs> moan. It was a full house, right? So, but it was so dead. It was probably worse than the Emirates. Mm. And I remember afterwards, I was talking to a couple of City fans, right? You know, and 
I said to my guy, you lot slag, you like to slag the Emirates off. This place is quite a nagger, oh, Robbie. It's terrible. It's always dead. They go, unless we're, unless we're playing against a big team, we're playing against Arsenal, you know, Man United, Liverpool, the atmosphere is great. If we play against, you know, like today, Middlesbrough, everyone's turned up, expectation we're going to win is quiet mm. until we score. I've got uh, uh, the guys from Redmen TV, uh, Liverpool fans, they say the same thing to me. They told me to cop. Now, we always think... Liverpool's one of the best atmospheres. Yeah. They're always telling me the cop is dead and they're all the same problems. Mm. You know, and the cop's that le- you know, known for its legendary atmosphere, but they're telling me about all the problems with people with the same sort of things, iPads, this, that. The atmosphere's dead. We was at the London Stadium the other day, West Ham. Mm. I mean, oh my God. You know, when you used to go to Upton Park, the mm. atmosphere was cracking. Night time. It was a night game. Yeah. The London I used Stadium, to dread right? That at Upton Park. Yeah, the London. Apart from getting your kicked in, but the London Stadium. Speak for yourself, <laughs> mate. Not me. Not me. The London Stadium was dead. Yeah. Right. A terrible atmosphere. Mm. When the third goal went in, when they scored their oh, goal it was back, empty. I don't think I was hardly any West Ham fans there to view it. No. So, is this a football problem? There is a football problem um, because, like I said, people in this country haven't seemed to embrace the modern technology and what makes me laugh is these older lot that moan about mo- modern technology and modern football are moaning about it on their modern phone <laughs> you using know, modern it, things like twitter <laughs> it, you know and it's like you're contradicting yourself there mm. mate but other countries seem to have embraced it better than we have you know you only have to look within german football um, and it's not just your Bayern Munichs and your Dortmunds that have got great atmospheres. There could be a, a, a match at the weekend between two of the bottom sides. The atmosphere is insane. Because they've all got these ultras, haven't they? They've all got these... Rocking. They've all got these ultra... And the, and the one club that does it over in the UK is Crystal Palace. They've yeah. got their ultras in that little section behind the goal in the corner. Yeah. That no matter what, whether they're losing or whatever, they get behind the team. And... They're known for having, possibly, yeah. I'd say they've got the best atmosphere, haven't they, in the Premier League? In, in terms of what they do there, and because the club have allowed them. The club have helped, you know, help mm. them. Although it'd be easier for them, because yeah. they haven't had all the same sort of problems like new stadium, mm. um, allocating, putting people in certain areas and stuff like that. But then that. they put them in a certain area. You know, the club turned around and said, you know, we might upset some people by moving them from an area that they, they've sat for a long time. Enjoy that area. But we want to create this. And in the long run, it's going to be beneficial to us as a club. Mm. So they've moved those fans. You know, maybe had to compensate those fans if they've moved them or, you know, sweeten them up, so to speak. Because, you know, I wouldn't like being moved from a, a, a part of the stadium that I've spent a long time being at. Do you know what? I spoke to in the summer. Um, I spoke to Ivan Gazidis, right? I was over in um, America when I was yeah. always doing Around that tour. Around his house. <laughs> Around his house. A bit pally there. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. Right? Um, I saw him. It was uh, the launch of the new Arsenal kit, and I saw him there, and I had a good chat with That's him. That's a problem one, as well. <laughs> we'll talk about that on another show, right? And we, I spoke to him, and I said, I, I asked, I said, Ivan, the app, I said, we've got this world-class stadium. Really annoys me. Brilliant stadium. We've got a brilliant team, you know, that, that you know, it's got a good home record. Well, you're going to say brilliant manager for a minute, <laughs> Right, that's another show as well, right? <laughs> um, why can't we have a brilliant atmosphere to go with it? Why? Right? Now, he said to me, this is what he said to me at the time. He said, listen, he does acknowledge that the atmosphere needs improving, mm-hmm. right? And he's open to ideas. Yeah. on how to improve the atmosphere. Anybody, any Arsenal fan who's listening to this podcast, if you've got any ideas on how to improve it, I want you to let us know. We're going to gather all the information that we get and we'll go, I'm, I'm going to make sure I go to Ivan Gazidis with some of the good points. But he said to me, now one of the ones we spoke about, mm-hmm. I said to him, why can't we have singing sections? That, that, I, I disagree, and I think you've said this before, with the junior gunners, Mm-hmm. youngsters being next to the away hardcore fans. away fans. You know what we're like when we're away, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, right? So I disagree with that. That's where we should have, we should have some mm. ultra or whatever you want to call them, Arsenal fans there. Yeah. And in the North Bank, we should have another section that it doesn't have to be the whole ground. Two sections, I said to him, with probably about a thousand or even 500 like-minded fans 
mm. where their job is to get behind the team, yeah. right? And he said to me, he goes, I'm for that, but how do you get people to move? Now, my, my thinking in, on it is that you say to, you say to fans, you, say, you, say to, you make an announcement at the start of the season, mm -hmm. and you say, see this section here, this block, we're turning it into a singing section. If you want to stay here, if you sat here and that, you want to stay here, fine. But it's going to be loud. It's going to be boisterous. Fans are going to be waving yeah. flags and everything like you that. You can't complain. There can yeah, be no, oh, turning. it's too noisy. Now, I, it's if you want to move and swap with somebody else somewhere else who would like to come into this singing section, let us know and we could arrange a swap. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way around it. Because I don't think you can go to a fan who's been sat there for 10 years and say, mate, singing section, you've got to... You know, mm. how old are you? 50? No, you're moving. We're moving a 20-year-old. You the, can't the do that. Here, but I think if you did it that way, naturally, mm. some people who not really might not like that, they might say, oh, you know, I want a bit of a quieter out so I'm going to move elsewhere. But I think the thing is, though, Robbie, is that the junior gunner section was not there when the Emirates opened. Mm. They put that in and moved people for that. So they couldn't. Why can't so, they? So why can't they do it for a senior yeah. section? Yeah. This is what I'm saying. They've, they actually implemented the junior gunner section only a few years back. Mm. Now, there were people in those seats. They've had to move them. Now, how did they move them? Mm. Yeah, because that whole section didn't randomly turn around in one preseason and go, that's it, I'm moving. Mm. They were forced to move, basically, mm. for a, another word. They, you know, what did Arsenal do to force them to move to another section of the stadium? Did they give them something? Was there a little extra incentive? Did I mean, that's something we need to, yeah, or, we need to find so out. So Arsenal and Ivan cannot sit there and turn around and say, how are we going to move people? It can be done. But he's he's open to ideas. I oh, know, it, yeah? it's all well and good right. him saying he's open to ideas. No, but let's but, test him. Yeah, let's exactly. put him to the test, exactly. yeah? Exactly. He's saying he's open to ideas. I'm saying to anybody who's listening this or watching this, mm. right, let's get some ideas on the table. Exactly. Send them in. Send them into Arsenal Fan TV. We're going to sit down. We're going to go through these. Talk. Let's try and get some like-minded fans together, and mm. let's try and put. Because I, I hate the atmosphere at the Emirates it's right horrible. now. It's horrible. It needs to be. But we could turn that place into fortress. I think there's no excuse, right? I went to PSG. You know, we've been everywhere. We've been Dortmund. The atmosphere is unbelievable. We've been Olympiacos, places like that where you know their fans are in like an hour and a half before the game, yeah. going mental. But for me, the most impressive atmosphere for me that I've been to recently was at Paris Saint-Germain. Mm. And the reason why I say that is because they're a club that, very similar to City, where money's arrived recently, mm -hmm. big players have arrived recently, yeah. um, new fans, they've got loads of new fans that have just all of a sudden wanted to follow up Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah. Yet still... A newish stadium as well, new yeah. stadium. So you would have thought they'd have the same sort of problems that Arsenal yeah, have. they didn't. The place was rocking. Even I looked on the top of top tier. Yeah. The place was jumping. There was women, youngs, olders. Everyone was bouncing. All four sides. The whole game. Yeah. And if they can do section. it, and like you said, they've got their ultras getting the fans behind. I think we need something like that. Mm. At the Emirates. I don't yeah. know how we're going to achieve it. Do you know what? <laughs> do, do maybe have to team up with, with speak to guys from Red Action. Or, mm. Because I think these guys are important. They've been there. They've been doing it for yeah, years. I, this is the thing. I, I said to you all along, I appreciate what Red Action have done. Don't get me wrong. And I know that they've got a difficult job. My issue is that I feel that they've lost all heart in it. Yeah, but you were calling them out, I'm saying. Yeah, because right? I feel they've lost all heart in it. So if you've lost all heart in it and you don't, you don't care about doing it. Why are you dealing in a positive it, way? No, because I tried doing that, but then you just get palmed off. <laughs> and it's like, at the end of the day, I want nothing more than to create uh, the best atmosphere off the pitch and the best team on it. Mm. You know, and this is what I want. No, the so, so there's no excuses for anybody. There is I mean, no excuses. This, this is the thing, and it's... Mm. I want this. I want the best for Arsenal on and off the yeah. pitch. I've got and, a friend uh, who's a Dortmund fan, and, he's, uh, and actually he's trying to arrange for us to go over. And maybe it could be something we could bring you along to as well, to go over to a Dortmund game to see mm. how they do it. And one of the things he said to me, he goes that they have different, um, you know, these guys on the megaphones. Yeah. He goes, sometimes they, if a player's doing bad, they'll say, you know, he's having a poor run or something, right? <laughs> you know what's coming, didn't you? <laughs> I see you <laughs> laughing, right? They have a guy on a megaphone. They have a guy on a megaphone who gets a section of the fans to get behind that particular player. Mm. Behind him, not like maybe yeah. you be doing. Can you imagine me? You'd, have it, you'd be slating him. All right, 
You can you imagine me with a megaphone with Theo and Ox and that? You'd be like, you! They'd, be come, they'd come off the pitch crying. Ch- you know? You'd be like, Jesus. God, but, no. but you know what? Again, because we see a lot of times how fans can turn quickly on mm. players on the pitch. We had it the other day with Jenkinson, right? Mm. So even those things for me are fantastic. See, I, I, fantastic. that's the thing. You mentioned Jenkinson there, and I've got a problem with the people that start on him in, with inside the stadium because you don't want to do that type of stuff. And it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll criticise the man when I come on and do interviews mm. and stuff because I don't... Yeah, no, this is, you know, listen, that's after the game, exactly, criticising's fine. It's inside, I, I, For me, put, listen, we do Arsenal fan TV, fans come on and we allow them to have their... Do you know what to I have their say, and I, and I think if you've seen a crap performance, say it as it is. Yeah. But during the game, we need to be do beyond the Do you know what? I want you to ask Ivan something from me. He's not right. my mate. I just see him yeah, every day. Give, yeah. give him a ring. I run into him. I thought he got what? his phone number. What do you think his, this is? Get him on his cell phone. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> but no, what I want you to do is, right, I want you to put this question forward. Yeah. Um, I want to know whether there's a noise restriction within the Emirates because of you know residents. What? I think there, I think there could be. The reason you, why you know, is because the sound system is yeah. so low. So low. Now, one of the things that happens is when we go to these European places and whatnot, it's like being in a club. Yeah. The bass is just thumping. Well, PSG, I mean, it, I, thought, I thought you was on the, it, it, you was on the like deck. Spinning the ones and twos, you know, people that, yeah. I think there must be. Call, me, it, call me, I do weddings. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, but you know, even when we went to um, uh, Basel, mm. um, and it's, and it, it just vibrates, it's boom, boom. Mm. And it kind of just gets you like... I've noticed that. I've yeah, noticed it's that. just that... Uh, Bayern Munich as well. Yeah. And it's just boom. And it, you know, you, you go to the Emirates and you listen to Arsene's interviews. Mm. And you, you, can you can't... It. That's good for me. But. We will ask him that. You know what? And I've noticed even when you go to other grounds in the Premier League and it's louder. You've mm. just reminded me of another... F- Pet hate of mine. Mm. What's our tune? What tune do we come out that, to? What do we? It used to be good West Ham bubbles. And it, you well, know, I'm glad we ain't got nothing like that. Yeah, it? but it's at least, at it's least they've got they come out of something. Yeah? There's exactly. They come out of bubbles. Chelsea come out to something. Mm. What do we come out See, to? See, this is the thing. Is this is one of the things that I spoke to Red Action about the other week, and I, I was tweeting with them, and we was actually having a little dialogue between ourselves about a few things, and it was, and this was brought up about the whole entrance thing and they said that one of the issues is is that no matter what's picked someone's going to moan about it so, so in that, and, and i said so in that sense i can understand their point of view because it's you can never do right but at the end of the day what i feel is is that pick a tune if you don't like it tough or what about you get behind it. what about again this is something that we could help with what about like you pick some a few tunes and then you do a poll on it and say to people, right, what yeah. tune would you like us to come yeah. out to? Because we used to And then once we voted Arsenal. on it, it's a bit like Brexit, isn't it? Yeah. Once it's voted on it, whether you like it or not, we're doing it. Yeah. And, it, you know, why don't we just... And if you don't like it, make a banner about it. <laughs> <laughs> Call me, I know a good guy. <laughs> but, you know, we, we, we've had good old Arsenal. We've yeah. had the Elvis song mm. um, and things like that. And it, it's just... And now we've got this thing where they show the clips before the game of... You know, it's like that trying to be that inspirational thing, but no, we need a tune to come out. Exactly, we, we need, need a, something. We need an idea. I, I, I'd be and we good need the old sound system to we, be we even, A few years ago, we had a, we used to come out to that Elvis tune. Remember? That's what I mean. Right? The wonder of you. The wonder of you, which oh, I must admit, I'm not a fan. I wasn't because a fan of that why because that, what is just that because I with just, just That's because what I mean. it's, it wasn't even just that. I just felt that the tune wasn't up tempo enough. You could come out of something a bit more to get you fired up, but at least. Hmm. When we was coming out to that, fans used to hold up their scarves. Yeah. It used to and create it, it something. It used to create a little Yeah, side. you know. Maybe, maybe with all the talk of Alexis, we could come to who let the dogs out. You know, <laughs> maybe we could get Alexis out. Who let the dog? You know, and then we, we can all raise our banners of Atom and Humber and... Yeah, not your you know, banners. And, yeah, not, not my either. ones. Not, uh, not my ones. Uh, <laughs> we, need to, we need to be coming out of something. Um, yeah. So... There's so many little things that we can do to improve it, but at the same time, Arsenal have to work alongside it. And this is what I said about yeah. Red Action and what I was trying to say about the transparency is that instead of Red Action moaning um, on Twitter and stuff about the fans, why don't they gather up all the information? Why don't they yourselves gather up the information? Pull it all forward to the club and say, this, the fans have spoken. You know, you've got such a big platform with Arsenal Fan TV and you put polls out there. 
Yeah. What do you think? You, what, no, what I'm saying is yourselves. <laughs> why don't you put yeah. polls out there saying, uh, here's a list of songs. What do you think, right? And what you do is you get all these different mm. polls, you compile them together, and you come to the club and say, right, the fans have spoken. This many thousand fans said that they wanted this as the walkout tune. This many thousand fans said that they wanted uh, this as. Uh, pre-match entertainment etc etc you pull it all forward to the club and say right can you help us with this will you do this with us mm. and if the club don't help you with any of those things you can then go back to everyone and said right we put this forward the club said no then the fans instead of blaming uh, red action or yourself or anyone else will then know who to blame and will be able to say to the club well why won't you do that why can't we do that if we can't have the volume turned up because there's a Noise restriction. Uh, re noise restriction. It's not the club's fault. Then, then it's not know. the club's fault. It's not Red Action's fault. Mm. It's something, you know, we can go for the council. Let's start on them then. You know, I'll go for everyone. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go for the local council. <laughs> you know, Islet and council will be sick of me. And, it, it, you know, and it, but this is what I'm saying, Robbie. A bit of transparency so we mm. know what's actually going on. Are Arsenal stopping Red Action from doing things? Or are Red Action really not interested in it and this is what we want to know as fans well, because I, we just I, I don't think, know i think speaking to guys from red action they definitely want a, a, a great atmosphere i know they would club. love to have a great atmosphere and, but i feel they've and, lost the heart and, and these sections and that you we know talk what about, i think maybe it's for up to us as fans and up to to try and help rejuvenate those guys yeah. and i take what you're saying i think you're you're right and i think what we That's you know listen first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um i think this is a, as we're drawing to a close here i think the positives, what we got to take. Let, let, let's gather this information. I want people on this video, ArsenalFanTV.com, right? Send us in what you think mm. um, should be done, in your opinion. We're going to gather it all up. And I will take this to Ivan Gazidis because I spoke to him. No, I ain't got his phone number. I don't, ring him. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to get hold of him again. They'll be like, who are you? <laughs> what? He spoke to you when? No, we don't know nothing about that. Ooh. <laughs> right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, get the information yeah. um, that we we gather up on this, and I promise you, I will we will compile this, and I will take this yeah. to him. There's other people there at Arsenal. I will take this to him, mm. and I will try and get it to him and see what their response is. We're gonna follow this through. I really want to do something mm. about the atmosphere. I think. The guys that have been trying, Red Action and other guys, um, I commend them for what they've done. That's yeah. what I say. I commend them. They've been doing something when other people have been doing nothing, just sitting on their hands. But I think now it's time. We've got to take this up a level now. Yeah. And like you said, we have got this platform here. It is for Arsenal fans. And let's do something that can exactly. help this. We want a world-class team and a world-class atmosphere. We've got a world-class stadium. Yeah. We've got the makings of a world-class team, right? But the atmosphere, us as fans, we slag off the players. Mm. Maybe the players could turn around and slag us off and say, well, hold on, not, be away, nice. from, not away from home. Away from home is pretty. And, and why is that? Why is that? Finally, why is that? Why is it that when you go away from home, you haven't got an ask, you haven't got to ask an Arsenal fan you've to see. Got, you've got a lot of fans that maybe don't go to the Emirates no more, go to away games as well. Um, I'm not, but not just yeah, but that, there's a lot of fans that go was, to both yeah I know there's a the lot. majority of fans there yeah, that away I, games go to both a lot now um, a lot now there is do go to both a few years ago it used to be so why when um, they go away to a ground because nobody you, needs because to tell them to sing people go there are very like minded that so want amongst, to create an atmosphere yeah. and we're all amongst like minded people and the one thing about singing it's infectious so at the moment a few people start singing you're inclined to join in. You don't fit. It's like being in a nightclub. You don't want to be the first one on the dance floor. Mm. Everyone hangs around the edges. And then once a mm. few start going on the dance floor, mm. you then make And what do move. they do? What do they do sometimes at nightclubs? Being someone who used to be into that industry as well, mm. like yourself. We used to employ dancers and people like that exactly. to get people to get on the people dance floor. Going. So it's the same like with the Emirates and that. We maybe need the guys with the megaphones and to the drums and that going. to get people going. Yeah. When the atmosphere is dropping, to lift it back up exactly. again. Exactly. You know. And when the times are tough and you need to be that twelfth I mean, man. One thing Ivan Gazidis did say to me is, "Go, he's not a fan of those clappers that Leicester have got." Oh no, I'm not. So he goes, no, that, he goes, he goes Robbie, I'll as long as you ain't bringing no clappers to me, well, mate, I go, oh, no. I'm with him on that oh, one. I'm I not. Think, I think that would be getting shoved up. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got a great <laughs> atmosphere, though. Yeah. At Leicester, they've got. 
and they won the title. And mm. that atmosphere that they had there that helped like the push them man. across the line. That was the 12th man. That, that so, atmosphere was just as important as Jamie Vardy and Riyad Mahrez yeah. in many respects. So no one liked going to Leicester last year, apart from us. We were the only team that went there and won. True. And Glad you got that in. Yeah, got that in. Still didn't win us anything, <laughs> did it? But, you know, and the thing is as well, if we get these little sections like you talked about, beyond the clock in and beyond the north bank, the club need to put their hand in their pocket as well. You know, and again, we mentioned Flags. Leicester. You, you look at Leicester. Um, when they go away from home, for instance, they put hats on every seat for their fans or scarves or something. So you start doing... You did it that at a time at Wembley yeah, in a time? You, you start doing a, a little section for the fans... Yeah, uh, and then you've got everyone around them to think, why have that lot got? Mm. Uh, well, we want some of that as well. Well, we're going to have to start creating a bit of noise in our block and we're going to have to start doing something so that the club take notice of, of us as well. Mm. You know, and I, I've, you know, I know that they only do it for the big games, but that was my issue as well, is that why do they do these big shows for the big games? Mm. You know, as far as I'm concerned, we could be playing Sunderland at home those are the games that need Munich help. at home. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no difference between the yeah. game. They're both as big as each other. And Sunderland at home is a game that would need more help exactly. than a Bayern because fans will be more up for it anyway. Yeah. Listen, um, we're going to have to lock it off now. Um, this is the first of our podcasts. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's a very serious podcast because, honestly, I really want people to send us in your ideas, whether it be in the comment section, whether you email it in, we want to know. You know, and you, you can Mr. DT's on Twitter as well. You can at Mr. DT 2016. Um, we want to know what you think should be the improvements to the atmosphere. What do you think the problems are? How do you think we can solve them? We're going to compile something, mm. and I promise you, we will get this to Arsenal and Ivan Gazidis. Yeah. And let's try and do something about this. We're always talking about it. We're always moaning about it. We need a solution to it. Mm. Um, this is something that, you know, I mean, and it's not going to be easy. No. You isn't. know, it could even be, you know, even things like ticket prices and that impact on the atmosphere because, yeah. you know, you know, those younger, hungry fans can't get in to express themselves in the ground. So mm. it's going to be... I think stewarding is a big problem and I think that's something that only Arsenal can mm. address. Red Action can't address that. We can't address that. And as fans, we are telling you that there is issues with your stewards. So you need to do something about it. Mm. Because there are some, don't get me wrong, in my block, absolutely sound. They don't even dare tell me to sit down. Maybe that's because they've seen my videos. But <laughs> no, but, you know, they, they, they're like-minded people and they, they want an atmosphere. The, the stewards in my oh, section, yeah, yeah, yeah. they want an atmosphere. They don't mind me standing up and going mad and, and whatnot because they want to see that. And I get on great with them. But I have also seen, myself personally this season, have seen stewards telling fans to sit down and threatening to take their season tickets off, books off them because all they are doing is trying to sing and trying to create an atmosphere. That's wrong. That's wrong on mm. so many levels, Robbie. Okay, guys. Well, listen, this has been our first podcast. Uh, don't forget to um, download it on iTunes and all this, whatever it is. We're new to this. So, <laughs> but download it. We'll give you all the links below where you can download the podcast. Um, and uh, listen, I hope that you'll be back for the next one.